Okay. We just began yesterday where Avram requested the Morris Machpelah for the burial location for Sora, his wife. And Ephron initially says, consider it a gift. Avram says, no, I will pay for it. And ultimately, Ephron asked for it, asked an enormous amount of money from Avram. And the Torah tells us, on Posit Tezvov, Chav Gimel Tez, Adoni Shmaini, Arab Eretz Arba Meir Shekel Kesef. A piece of property for 400 shekel kesef. And the Gemara says this is not ordinary silver coins. These coins were very valuable. What is it considered? Just pay it and it's yours. Vayishma Avrom El Ephron. And he agreed. To the Ephron's request, Vayishka Lavrom, the Ephron, as a Kesef Shediber, but Osnev Nechis, Arbame Shekel Kesef, over La Socher. He weighed out to Ephron the silver, which was stated in public, in the public presence of the Venechis, those that are members of the community, Arbame Shekel Kesef, 400 silver coins over La Socher, meaning there was no market in the world where these coins were questioned what their value was. That's how exceptionally valuable they were. But if you notice, in the Pasuk, until now the word Ephron, every time Ephron was written, it had a vav in it. When he weighed out the silver to Ephron, the enormous amount that he asked for, which initially he said, let it be considered a gift, the word Ephron is written with the vav deleted. Ephron is without the vav. So the Midrash tells us that what's the reason why it's deleted? Because Ephron, to indicate that Rishoyim Omrim Harbe made him Osama Filamat, that a Russia, he promises you the world, and when it comes to deliver, he doesn't deliver as much as Nyota. Initially he said, let it be considered a gift. At the end of the day, he's asking for an enormous amount of money. So this clearly is a blatant deficiency in Ephron in himself. Therefore, the Torah goes and omits the Vav and does not spell his name in his full spell to indicate this level of deficiency. Okay? He has this deficiency. So Rabbeinu Bachi over here says, which I mentioned many times, that the numerical value of Ephron with the Vav deleted is... 400, which is the numerical value of Ayin and Rach, the evil eye, that initially Ephron was envious. Avram had tremendous wealth. And when he saw the degree of wealth that Avram had, had, his greed could not allow him not to ask for literally a king's ransom for this piece of property. And as we, as we said, that initially it wasn't even sellable or saleable because it was a cave that had all kinds of demons and spirits and anybody who would go into that cave would not come out alive. But he saw to what degree Avram wanted it and he figured he'll take advantage of him. He's dealing with a person, it's like taking candy, candy from a baby. But it was due to his evil eye, that's why this was his level of a negotiation. He starts, it's considered yours, and then if you want it, you're going to pay a fortune, which he did, because he really didn't know the true value of the cave, because this was the Mar Samach Pelo, where Adam Achava was buried, and as I mentioned yesterday, when the soul ascends, this is the most direct route. The soul, when it ascends to heaven, it descends on this direct route. Okay? Ephron is 400 without the Vav, Ayn Ra, it's confirming him, it's labeling for what his essence is. He mentions, we find that Esau, when Yaakov had sent the gift to him, you know, the flocks, the herds, in various groups with people leading each one of the groups, the message was that 
Yaakov Malochim, he sent messages, messengers or angels. Asaph's coming against you with 400 men. 400 is the numerical value of Ayn Rahm. Asaph cannot tolerate the existence of Yaakov. And the number 400 indicates that that was, otherwise was Torah sharing was with us, 400. To indicate that was the relationship between Asaph and Yaakov. Ayn Ra, again, it's Ayn Ra. Okay. But it didn't make a difference. There was no amount of money that was asked that Avram would withhold to provide the burial location for Sari Menu. It mentioned, the Medjur says to Avram when he purchased the Orsamach Pelo, he says, finally, now after you purchased the Orsamach Pelo, you're finally wearing my, my cloak of Chesed. Until now, you, you all the Chesed you did, you did not wear my cloak of Chesed. But now, when you purchased the property, the location for the burial of Sari Menu, now you purchased it. Now, finally, you're emulating my chesed. So we asked the question. I mean, Avram, his whole life was chesed. We speak about his hospitality for the angels, that what he offered them was the equivalent of the meal that Shlomo Melch would serve at the height of his power. That was the extent of his hospitality. But yet only now, Hashem says, now finally, when you purchased the Marzah now finally you're emulating my chesed. You're wearing my cloak of chesed. So how do we understand it? So what we explained was that where do we see Hashem's chesed? How does Hashem's chesed demonstrate itself? Olam chesed yibana, hosgin tilim. Why did God create existence? God had no there was no impetus. He owed nobody any, anything because nothing existed. Because he wanted to create a setting that the human being, that if he succeeds in the challenge which he's going to be presented with, he will merit the ultimate, which is a relationship with him, which we call the world to come, in a total spiritual setting. Now, there, what was the level of chesed? That the human being should be the full beneficiary of the act of chesed, of this kindness. When Avram did the chesed, until this moment, what was the impetus for that chesed? What was its value? It was only to facilitate, it wasn't the person who should be a beneficiary of chesed. It's only he hosted him at a level so he should enter into a dialogue and ultimately he should convince him that to monotheism, to convert him from the pagan to a monotheist. That was the purpose. It wasn't, the, the purpose and the objective was not the person should be a beneficiary of the material that he was providing. When he purchased the Maris Machpelu for Sari Menu, it was the value for the person. Sari Menu needs a burial plot, regardless of its cost, and he will buy what's in her best interest. The Maris Machpelu was the ultimate location to be buried. Money was not an issue. It was not a discussion. Whatever it is, that's the chesed of Hashem. Doing chesed, on, providing on behalf of the person, not with an objective where you, the vehicle for that objective is chesed. That's the reason why Hashem said, Tavram, finally now, you're assuming my cloak of chesed the way I do chesed, which is chesed for the sake of chesed, not chesed as a vehicle for some other reason, which is okay, but it's not exactly God's chesed. So I was thinking while I was speaking that why did Sari Menu pass away? We discussed yesterday. Why is the portion of Chai Sar juxtaposed to the Akeda? That due to the Akeda, that's why Sari Menu passed away. Because when she heard what Sultan had shared with her, what Avram was about to do, it was too much for her to tolerate. And she expired. She couldn't deal with it. And we had explained yesterday. Why did Sutton do this? Why did he do it? Because he wanted to undo 
whatever the value of the Akeda was. Because the Akeda, its value is that whenever Sutton will prosecute the Jewish people, the Akeda is a basis to silence him. But if Avram would re regret that he ever did the Akeda because it was the cause of his wife's passing, so as the Rambam says, that a person is a tzaddik all of his life, if he regrets all the good deeds he did, the record is totally obliterated. There's no trace of that positive record. So if Avram would say, I regret that I ever did that, that cater doesn't exist. Avram was able to withstand that. And Avram understood it. As it says, he remained silent, did not say a word. So what was the value of Sarah's passing? Not only was Sarah his partner in everything he did, as it says, Avram Megairis Hanoshim, the Sir Megairis is Hanoshim, he converted the men to monotheism. She converted the women to monotheism. But in addition, now he had this new challenge. Does he get upset and regret what he did? Or does, or does he remain silent and doesn't question Hashem and goes further? So Sari Menu's passing actually caused the value of what he did even to bring it to another level. It demonstrated his level of negation to Hashem. Even though it was most dear and precious to him, his wife, she was taken because of that, not a word. So to a degree, and she was the object to bring it to another level. Since beholdness to sorrow, Imenu, even though, even though it was not her choice that she died, but she was the object through which his level of the Akedah was brought to another level. So his appreciation to her was even at a greater level. Therefore, this was a full expression of the chesed that he's doing on behalf, because qualitatively, it's another level due to our passing. The field that belonged to Ephron, which is in the Machpelo, it's identifying the location. The field, the cave that was in that field, and the trees in that field, which were within the boundary surrounding that location. To Avram as a purchase before the eyes of the Menechis, which were the community, in the presence of all the members of the community, of the city, meaning this transaction can never be contested, ever. It was such a public event that if anybody, if Ephron should ever, or his descendants, should contest this transfer, it can never be test contested. Because it was done before the eyes of the case who initially who asked for the meeting, and Choboy Shariro. And Avram wanted it to be in such a public setting that it should never be questioned that the Mars Machpelo belongs to Avram Avinu, and he purchased it rightfully, and he paid whatever was asked for it. And there was not a consideration for a moment that Avram in any way misled Ephron by paying for this piece of property. And the Torah goes, and the, is so specific, what transferred from Ephron to Avram, the field, the cave, and all the trees. And what are we getting so specific? I mean, the trees are totally irrelevant. The trees in the field that had circled that was within the boundary of the property. Even that was per, was transferred to Avram. I mean, the whole idea he wanted Mars Machpelos. He'd say that's the cave and the piece of property surrounding it. What do we have to get so specific? And the trees. So Rashi has two interpretations. The first doesn't address the trees. As a result of this trance, it had an elevate, it assumed an elevated status. It left the hand of an ordinary person and it entered into the domain of a king. It went from a ordinary common status to a royal status. By transferring, that's why Yokum, it was elevated. The simple reading means meaning yok means it was confirmed and that the transaction took place. But the first interpretation is by Yoko. It was elevated. It went from a communist status to 
a royal status. What does this mean? We mentioned that Yitzhak Avinu, that there was a famine and he wanted to leave Eretz Royal, and Hashem says, do not leave. Remain in the Philistine area and you'll be able to provide for your flocks and for your herds, grazing land. But whatever it is, he plants a planting that year, which was a famine year, and the yield was a hundredfold of what normally the yield would be, despite the famine. He sells the produce. Yitzchel becomes phenomenally wealthy. And the Torah uses a term, he became godol miot. He became very great. Say he became great. What's very great? So Rashi over there cites the Midrash that he became so, he assumed such a level of renown that people would say, we prefer the dung of Yitzchuk's donkeys over the gold of Avimelech, who was the king of the Philistines. Why? Because when you take the dung of Yitzchuk's donkeys, the dung turns into gold. And when you take the gold of Avimelech, the gold turns to dung. So this is the meaning, Godol Miod. He was very great. I mean, whoever heard of dung turning into gold? Evidently, because the dung was the dung of Yitzchok's donkeys, it wasn't just ordinary dung. Because it was associated with him in God's eyes that had special status. And the brach is unlimited. Because Yitzchok is an unlimited person. Due to his dimension of spirituality, anything associated with him has relevance to that same unlimited Capacity, therefore, generates tremendous wealth. Avimelech, who was a Russia, who was a physical heathen, it's the altered level of what? Physicality, which is finite. Therefore, when you take the gold, the gold turns to dung. When Avram Avinu purchased the Mars Machpelo, and he assumed not only did we chesed, it was exactly the chesed of Hashem, as he said. Now, finally, you're wearing my cloak of chesed. So Avram is elevated to another level. The purchase now, which becomes his asset, identifies with him. It has an elevated status. Not only where he buried her. The whole transaction is and what was included in the transaction. The cave. The double level house. That was there. The field, the trees, everything had an elevated kush. Anything that was involved in that transaction, even not only the actual burial location, it was anything that had relevance because now it became Avram's asset. Being Avram's asset, it's elevated to, to an unlimited status. That's why Yoko. We find the Gemara tells us in Shabbos that if a person says, if we classify the early generations, they be not kimalochim, doesn't kimalochim, then we could be classified as bnei adam. But if we refer to the early generations as bnei adam, then our classification would be considered kechamorim, like donkeys, and even donkeys, not even the level of chamoro shapintchus ben yoyer. Not even the donkey of Pintras ben Yoyer. Who was the, what was the donkey of Pintras ben Yoyer? Pintras ben Yoyer was the father of Rabbi Akiva. So the Mara tells of her story, Pintras ben Yoyer, thieves, they stole this donkey. And then afterwards, and he lived in Eretz soil, and the thieves wanted to feed the donkey of Pintras ben Yoyer, Rabbi Pintras Yoyer, untied grain. Untied grain we, is called tevel. You're not permitted to eat it. The donkey would not eat the grain because it's untithed. What are we talking about? It's an unintelligible creature. Right? So what do want to eat the, the untithed? The answer is, because since it was the asset of Pinchas ben Yoyer, and Pinchas ben Yoyer himself would not partake of anything unless it was tithed, his asset is an extension of himself. And the Gemara says, Eina Kodesh Baruch Tzadikim, 
Hashem will not allow any pitfall to come to a tzaddik. Not only tzaddik, even the hemton shell tzaddikim. Even the animal of the tzaddik, the unintelligent animal, is protected that it should not partake of anything which is not permitted. And what's the what's the, the model of that? <coughs> the donkey of Pintus Ben Yoya. So if we say that the classify the early generations as Ben Yodom, they're like ordinary human beings, our classification is Chamorim. And even Chamorim, not even the Chamor, not even the donkey of Pintus Ben Yoya. But why if they're Anoshim? What are their donkeys? Their donkeys are special donkeys. <coughs> Because anything they're associated with assumes their persona. Of course, it's an extension of ourselves. By Yokom, I saw the Orov, Machpelah, and everything, the trees transferring from the possession of a commoner to a royalty. That's only the, the term we could use, <clears throat> but it was more than royalty. Avram himself was the founding patriarch of Jewish people. It assumed a whole new level of value. Avram was advanced in age, was old, advanced in days, and by Hashem Berach is Avram Bakol. So Rashi, famous Rashi, cites the Midrash. Bakol is Big Matria Ben. The numerical value of Bakol is Ben. Beis Nun is numerically Bakol. Being that that he had Yitzchok, he had everything. Now, to Avram Avinu, what was the value of anything? He was a very wealthy man. He had renown. The Seal of Kim. What was the value of all that? One thing. That he was able to further his espousal of monotheism. Everything was covered Shemayim. That was only to facilitate the covered Shemayim. God's glory. If Avram would die, then he have, would have no successor. Would he have a, a successor like Yishmael? Yishmael himself does not meet this, the grade of what a patriarch is, of the eternal people. When he had the child, which was the miracle child, at the age of 100, from Suri Menu, now he knew it's going to another level, that his value, his purpose, and ultimately, the objective of creation now will be met. So the Torah says, God bless them with everything. What's everything? Everything is bakol, is the ben, is Yitzchok. Everything else is totally meaningless. Because its only value is the sun. There's a midrash. The midrash says at the time of the Mabul, Hashem destroyed everything except for what went into the table. So the Midrash explains it with an allegory. A king makes a wedding for his only son, the prince. And as the son is approaching the chuppah, and he spent the fortune, the food, everything, in preparation for this wedding, the son dies right before the wedding. What does the king do? He destroys everything. So the people say, why are you destroying it? Give it to us. Let us be. Let us benefit from it. So the king says to his subjects, "You don't understand. Your value, everybody's value, is my son. If my son doesn't live any longer, nothing has value. Why did God create the animals and anything in the world to accommodate the human being? They have no value unto themselves. So once the human being is destroyed, existence has no value." Of course, existence is only facilitate the challenge for the human being, but if the human being has failed and that no longer exists, nothing has value. The value of whatever Yitzhak Avram had, the wealth, whatever he did in his life, was to continue that mission. Yitzhak was the qualified one to continue that and to advance it. Therefore, Hashem Be'er has Avram Bakol, Bakol is Ben. Yes, the sun. One second.